What I want to do is what I wanted to do this morning was answer any questions that you have, of course, uh, but also what I thought I would do is go through the Canvas site and the syllabus. It, um, I figured I might as well just do that, and I'll, I'm recording this, so um, I can put that up for everybody else. They can go and listen to it, and I don't have to repeat myself. Okay. All right, so let me do this. I think I can put, I think I can put the screen on here. Okay, so here's our class. And this is the this is the Canvas site. So uh, basically, um, it should be. I've tried to make it self-explanatory as possible. Um, some of the stuff on here you're not going to see. You're going to see this. Let me put the student view on. Okay, you're going to see this. And here, basic stuff. The home page was just the modules. Announcements very important. Very important to make sure that your um, email that you're using in Canvas is the same one that actually gets to you, okay? And another really, really important thing is for you all, let me do this, let me do this over here, for you all to make sure that if you email me about something, which is fine, and I'm happy to get your emails, if you email me about something, please do not use the Canvas messaging because what happens then in the Canvas messaging is that sometimes it gets to me no problem and other times, it does not get to me, and I have a, um, and then there'll be some email. It doesn't get to me, or it goes to my junk folder, or something happens to it. So email me from your regular email address if you need to get hold of me. Okay, and I should have put that on the syllabus. Maybe I'll correct that. Um, but but email me through the regular email. Don't email me through Canvas. Okay? Most of the time it goes through, but sometimes it doesn't. Okay. Uh, so announcements are very important, and you'll see the announcement. The only one we have up here is for the for the uh, the Zoom meetings, and I think I've got all four of them in there. And so here are the dates, and this is just this one link. You can use the same link for each meeting we have. And we'll be meeting every Tuesday at this time, 10 a.m. in the morning. And we will go, um, we'll go as long as we really need to go. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing we'll probably go about an hour, and you know, depending how many people show up. Okay. So that's the announcements. Modules. This is the main part of the class that you need to know about. Uh, this has course information here. We'll go through all this stuff. And then this, each of the sections here, uh, through here, and you'll just follow along with these. And then um, you want to make sure, and we'll get to this in the syllabus, you want to make sure that you are uh, you know, doing the right, the amount of stuff you need to do before the exams that you have, okay? So you need to make sure that uh, you know you've done the first. I can't remember if it's eight, eight or so before the midterm, and then you do the rest of them before the final. So it's pretty self-explanatory. There shouldn't be a lot on here. Um, each of the modules, um, we'll come back to the course information. But each of the modules, with the exception of the first one, the first one they're just slides and readings. Okay, so there's 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 slides, and then what you'll see is this is the chapter in the book that you should be reading. So Engler. Uh, and ninth edition, chapter one, here are the slides for that, and then some extra readings here for you to do. And these ones, um, these ones are not required. So the one thing about this class, and I, and I will get to this in a minute, but you don't have to do all the readings. Only the ones that have an asterisk in front of them, the videos and the readings are the ones you have to do. So for instance, in section two here, uh, here are the videos. And then the only reading you have to do are these two, okay, that have the asterisk, okay? Does that make sense? So you don't, have to do every, you don't have to do all these readings. Why are all the readings there? Good question. People always ask me this. All the readings are there because some people really get into this stuff and they really want to go into it. And so there's extra readings there. You can download them and read them later on after the class is over, whatever you want to do. If you find something you really like, you get excited about it, um, you've got some extra information there. That's one reason. The other reason is that if I ever do this class for graduate school, then I'll just make them read everything. And now that's the only thing I have to do to really change the class to make it a graduate class, roughly. Okay? So that's why that's that, that way. Okay? Next thing. The videos, all the lecture videos uh, that are based on the, on the chapters and the slides are all required. They have an asterisk in front of them. All the lecture slides don't have an asterisk, but the lecture slides are all required. Okay? And you see it says it here, required lecture video and readings have an asterisk in front of the link. All other videos and readings are optional. All lecture slides are required. Okay? 
because you need the lecture slides to go through for the chapters. And of course, all the chapters in the book are required reading. Okay, that makes sense? Hopefully you guys got that, okay? So you go through here, um, here are your lecture slides. We can open up for, for, for uh, the sec second session. They'll open up on here. If you wanna look at them on here, that's fine. I don't like to look at them on Canvas. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Get that a second. So here they are. You can go up here. You can flip through the slides, right? And you get the highlights of the chapter. And then if you want to download them, you go up here and click. I had somebody ask, ask me about downloading these things. And here's the download up here. And you go here and download it. These are in, uh, these are in PowerPoint format. So this assumes that you have Microsoft PowerPoint, but if you don't, I believe you can download these and then open them in with Google, Google Slides or whatever the Google Drive thing is. You can do that with PowerPoint. Okay, if anybody has any trouble with that, uh, let me know and I, I can, you know, make, I think you can alternate formats. I've never done this before. You can also uh, download it in different formats. You can make it into a PDF and download it if you want. Okay, let's do that here. Okay, so that's the slides. Uh, let's see. The next thing will be the videos. And the videos are here. And you'll notice nothing comes up when you do this. YouTube refuses to connect, right? This is a weird thing in Canvas. I have not figured this out why it does this. Sometimes the videos will open up in Canvas and sometimes they will not. And I have not figured out why one does it and one doesn't. I'm sure there's a reason for that. The good thing for you guys is you don't need to worry about that. You just go up here to this link, click on this link, and it will take you to the YouTube, and the YouTube video will come up in YouTube. Okay, so you can watch it in YouTube. And um, this is also useful to do it in YouTube because the other thing you can do is so we're going to talk about you'll, you'll hear about me in here. You know, I'll be talking. I believe you can do closed captions here, and it'll automatically generate captions. Okay. So this is a nice thing about YouTube. I believe all the videos have this captioning capability. Uh, if not, let me know and I will try to redo them, but I think they all have these in here. So it will take what I'm talking and I'll be talking down in the corner here and these will be the lecture slides I'll be going over, okay? So what I recommend is to open up the lecture slides that you have and then have them open in front of you or print them out and then uh, watch the video while you have the slides there and you can take notes on the slides. I think that's a good way to do things, okay? Now, not everything on the lecture slides is in the book. Not everything in the book is on the lecture slides. You've got to do the reading of the book, the chapter of the book, and you've got to do the lecture slides. You will be, you will be tested on both the slides and uh, the book chapters and then the other required readings in the class. That will be on your test, okay? So let's be clear about that, all right? So uh, there's me uh, back my when I had shorter hair. And you'll just see I go through this. I've, um, you will notice in this class, and I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, there are, uh, there are things that I like um, uh, in personality theory and things that I, I won't say dislike, but I'll just say I'm a little less interested in them, okay? So some of the stuff, some of the slides, some of the videos are... You know, I've, I've done a lot of enhancement. I've added a lot of things into it because it's stuff I'm really interested in and I like a lot. You will notice the Freud videos and the psychoanalysis videos I like quite a bit. And so this is a subject I like quite a bit. And so there's a lot of enhancement in there. Hence, when you look at the slide, you'll see the map of Germany and Poland and Austria. And um, because <clears throat> I think it's not in interesting for you guys to know where Freud was born and where he worked. Um, when we get to some of the other slides later on in the semester, you know, yeah, I don't really care so much, right? Guy was in America. He was an American scientist. He did some experiments. And so the slides will be less enhanced, okay? That's just my, I don't want to say bias. It's just my, um, my liking of some things more than others, okay? And this is a little bit of my bias toward personality theory. You'll notice that my bias is a little more toward the personality theories that have clinical relevance, because I'm a clinical psychologist, so I teach personality theory a little bit more with clinical relevance. If you took the class from one of the other professors who might be more in one of the experimental branches of psychology or social psychology, they might emphasize more of the experimental stuff, 
Okay, I'm emphasizing a lot in this class uh, the clinical stuff. And the book that I chose for the class emphasizes the clinical stuff. Okay, and I think it's a very, very good book. I would not make you pay so much money for the book if I didn't think it was really good. And it really covers a lot of the stuff that I, I, I really like about personality theory. So I, I feel very happy about the book. I do not feel happy about the price. Um, I, and you guys can please feel free, if you haven't got the book already, to you know, go out on Amazon and try to find a cheaper version of it. You can get an older edition. I don't care, but you will be responsible for any differences between the older edition and the newer edition. I don't know if there's that much difference in the, in the, in the two editions. Probably not, but, um, you know, again, you're going to be, I'm working off the ninth edition, okay? So that's the one I'm working off. Hopefully by next year or so, they'll come out with a 10th edition, and I'll still work off the ninth edition, and things will become cheaper. Um, you can rent the book. Um, uh, on Amazon, I think it's like 40 bucks, and sometimes used copies come up for, at a significant discount. Okay? But it's a very good book, and this is the only class that I have out of all the classes I teach where I am requiring students to get a relatively newer, expensive textbook. And the only reason I do that is because it's a new one, because I hate the idea that textbooks cost so much money. But that's what we're going to do. This is a good book, so hopefully it'll be worth it. Okay. So those are the videos, okay? So that's what you got to remember about the videos. Please make sure to hit this link on the top if it doesn't show up in the thing. Okay, so that's it. And then again, same thing here, slides show up, videos, readings. So this is the reading uh, that one of the readings you're required to do, extra readings. Uh, this is from a psychoanalysis entry written by Freud for the uh, uh, Encyclopedia Britannica in 1926. You hit this, it will come up in Canvas and you can read it right here. That's fine. Or you can go up here and you can download this in a, as a PDF. All the readings are in PDF form. Okay? So you can download that here. All right? And the same thing. So you'll see we're doing you know, introduction, right? And then session two. Freudian stuff, section three, Carl Jung. I happen to also like Carl Jung quite a bit. So I got a lot of stuff here on Carl Jung. Um, and again, you can see Freud and Carl Jung both get, both get two videos. They both get a part one and part two because these are guys I like. Okay. So part one, part two. Here, some extra readings here. Uh, there's in some of these things I've also included. Uh, personality tests. So here you go. You have the Jung type inventory. This is comes. This is a online version of the Myers Briggs test. This is really for your own enjoyment. I'm not going to test you on, you know, what score did you get on the test, and you have to turn in your test score and stuff like that. Some of the other professors who teach this class do that. I just put this in here for your own own um, amusement. And, um, you know, if it's something, you know, you want to talk about in the meetings, oh, I got, you know, I, I did the test and I came out as ENFP, and what does that mean? Uh, we could talk about that in some of the meetings, you know, maybe next time or something we could talk about that. Uh, you click on this, and it goes here, and again, stuff doesn't come up because there's something weird about Canvas. Just go to the link here, click it, and theoretically this should come up. Here we go. And this is the Jung typology test, and you go through this, and... It's relatively short. It's only 60 uh, questions. I think the original Myers-Briggs is in the hundreds of questions, so this one's pretty quick. These online Myers-Briggs tests, by the way, correlate actually very highly with the original Myers-Briggs test. So the typology you get on this will be very similar if you took the full-on Myers-Briggs. So you can feel pretty confident about what you get on these. Okay. And so you can do this, and you can see what your type is, and you can look up the type. They have a thing here. You can look up your type. Um, I have that a little bit on my lecture on Jung. There's something about the types. So you'll be able to listen to the lecture and learn a bit about the types. And if you want to discuss that, we can talk about that more. But this is really for your own fun. I'm not going to test you on what your type was, and you, know, you don't have to turn in your type to me in a report or anything like that. Okay? All right. So that's type, that's the test. And there's a couple tests along the way. Uh, there's a Rorschach personality test. There's another funny one down here, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so you see in session four, uh, we have more psychoanalytic dissidents, you know, related to psychoanalysis, Adler and Sullivan. Um, again, these guys are very interesting and very important for the history of psychology and the history of personality theory. And I got you a nice paper here on the birth order and the effect on personality. I am not going to make you read Adler because Adler's writing is like 
trying to decipher a spaghetti bowl. So I spared you that. Um, he's great theorist, not a great writer, at least in English. Okay. And we get down to session five, psychoanalytic social psychology. Again, we're still on this sort of theme of depth psychology, which is Freud and Jung and all these guys, psychoanalytic related stuff. You're going to talk about Karen Horney and Eric Fromm, and that's a, I have a two-part lecture on that, both very interesting people. We'll talk a little bit about feminism and, and psychoanalysis, very important stuff. Uh, the contributions of women to psychoanalysis, very, very important. And so you get some of that. And then the session six, we're going to talk about ego psychology, talk a little bit about Eric Erickson and Dan McAdams, maybe a little on Anna Freud here. Um, then we'll get down to seven, and we're going to talk about object relations theory. And this is an area of where I, I guess I could call myself an expert. This is the area of psychoanalysis and clinical psychology that I have been trained in and that I functioned in as a therapist. I did this, and so you're going to read one of the chapters in my book, the concluding chapter, in my book about drug use and object relations theory, and you have, and that's that's optional. You don't have to read that, but it's there. Then you can read a little bit about Otto Kernberg, who's one of the foremost uh, thinkers in object relations theory. And again, you get a two-part lecture on this because I know a lot about this. Okay, so first seven sessions, almost half the class is not half, but you know, getting close to it is is going to be on psychoanalysis and derivatives from psychoanalysis. So this, again, shows you my clinical bias toward things, okay? Uh, session eight, we're going to change things over, and you're going to actually uh, be talking about behaviorism. And as interesting as it might be, and as weird as it might be, this is another area that I have a tremendous amount of clinical experience. I worked as a behavioral psychologist in the in the sister hospital, the Camarillo State Hospital. Remember, our university used to be a, a mental hospital. I worked in the sister hospital up in San Jose, Agnews State Hospital, which is, if you went to Agnews, you would see it looks exactly the same as our campus. Same building, same design, built around the same time. Um, I worked there for a number of years as a behavioral psychologist and used applied behavior analysis. And so I actually, very weirdly, like behavior analysis. I like applied behavior analysis. I think it has its place. I think it's interesting and useful. Uh, I don't think it's useful and interesting for everything, but I do think it has its place, and it's something I know a lot about and I have a lot of practical experience with. So, uh, so you're going uh, you're gonna to do a little bit of an experimental analysis behavior here. Again, we're not going to talk so much a little bit on the clinical stuff, a little bit on here, uh, B.F. Skinner, who is the – one of the great proponents of behaviorism. Um, you're going to read a little bit about uh, his stuff, and we'll talk a little bit about here. You can read about the baby in the box and all this very interesting stuff going on here. Okay. And then session nine, we're getting to social learning theory. Um, another area that I know a little bit about because my first dissertation was a social learning theory dissertation. Um, and so I do know a little bit about Bandura and Rotter and Michelle, and so this is you're going to know a little bit about these guys. Uh, and then uh, session nine, after session nine, you will have your midterm. And there's a link to your midterm there. And you can either link to it here or you can link to it up under here under the assignments or the quizzes, either way, and you'll take your midterm. So you've got to make sure you've got through session nine before you do the midterm. The midterm has an expiration date. We'll go through that. So you do have to get through session nine by by the time the, the midterm is starts. It starts on June 17th. So you've got to make sure by June 17th you've gotten through uh, up through session nine. Okay, it's a lot of work. This is a very short, short semester that you guys are doing the first summer thing. So there's a lot of work to be getting through uh, in a short amount of time. So hopefully you guys have, um, you have, uh, uh, you know, get on this and you're going to do some of this every day. Okay. Do not try to cram at the last minute. That will not result in good, good test scores. Okay. So just so you know, under the gun here. So this is why you get, you're going to get done with this class really quick. That's the good news. The bad news is you're really going to have to do this almost like every day full time. Okay. All right. And we get through that, and then session 10, traits and personality. And here we're getting more into the theoretical and the experimental parts of personality theory. And you're going to learn a little bit about Gordon Alport, who is a very important person uh, in the history of psychology. And uh, you'll learn a little about Murray's personality theory and some of these kind of things. And you'll read through that. Uh, session 11 is you're going to learn about the factor analytic genetic and evolutionary determinants of personality. And really, here is an area where... Um, uh, another area I like quite a bit, and I would actually like to take this lecture and make this into a whole class, 
and have a class on um, evolutionary psychology. And I can mean to do that here. And um, you guys may or may not know, I am, I am the founder of the psychology department. I'm the one who started it. And um, uh, I'm Dr. Baker and I, who you may know, who's retired now, uh, and I um, came up with the curriculum for the program, and I can kick myself now that I did not put evolutionary psychology into the curriculum and make it a required class. Very important. This is going to be sort of the future of psychology. It's very interesting. Um, factor analysis is a form of statistical analysis that is used that was used very heavily uh, back in the day to study personality theory, so you need to know a little bit about that. Uh, genetics, you're going to learn a little bit about that. Uh, this is not a class in genetics. Genetics is, is there's a class in genetics in the, psycho in the biology department. I encourage you if you have time to take that. Uh, but it's not easy going. Um, and so you're going to get a little bit of that here. And then you're going to get a little bit about evolutionary determinants of personality. Rather than lecture uh, you guys myself in this session, instead what I've done is I've put up a really, really excellent lecture by another professor. And this is Professor Robert uh, Sap Sapolsky, who is a professor at Stanford University, who teaches a class in the evolution of behavior. And so you're getting a class from a Stan you're getting a lecture from a Stanford professor who is far more brilliant than I am and um, does a really, really good job. So it's a little bit of a long slog through the lecture. Um, and note that the first lecture starts four minutes in because he's doing a lot of class, uh, you know, administrivia stuff. So start at four minutes in. Uh, but really, really, really good lecture, uh, excellent lecture on evolution, evolution and, and behavior and personality traits. So um, I think that's really important to, to watch. And I, I really like this stuff. And you will be reading um, a little excerpt from a guy named uh, Rangham, who is one of the foremost writers on evolutionary theory and, um, and personality traits and, and human behavior. And you'll learn about uh, demonic males and how testosterone influences personality theory as seen through uh, studying of, 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 of apes. So very interesting. Okay. Uh, section, session 11, uh, we're going to go back now to traits. We're going to look at trait theory, situations, interactions. You're going to learn about the most important trait theory, which is the five-factor model, which actually has um, clinical applications. The NEO five-factor inventory is a uh, personality test that's uh, used uh, by some clinicians. And uh, you will have a chance to take an online variant of that, uh, the Big Five personality test. And there's a couple of these, but there's an online version. You can take that and see how you score on that. And you're going to learn about, about uh, um, a guy named Eisnick, who was very important in this, in this uh, coming up with this uh, five-factor uh, model. Okay? Session 13, uh, we're going to get into humanistic theories of personality. Also, these have uh, a very close relationship to clinical practice. You're going to learn about person-centered person theory of Carl Rogers, uh, who is also a clinician I, I, I like a lot. Um, <clears throat> and also, you learn about Abraham Maslow and the hierarchy of needs, which you're also going to learn in other classes. And so you're going to learn a little bit about self-actualization. And again, here, um, I've included some video, uh, which is an interview with Maslow and an interview with Carl Rogers, so you can actually hear them and see them working and hear them, hear the stuff from them directly, which I think is, is very useful. Okay? And you'll learn a little bit more about humanistic psychology, which is a really interesting area, and it's an area I like, and, um, and also something really, I think you'll find something good about this. If you end up going, for instance, to CSC Sun, uh, uh, Cal State Northridge, for the program, their marriage family therapy program in the education department, the counseling department, um, they will use a lot of the stuff. They, they, they come from a humanistic basis. And so they're one of the few programs still left in the world that teaches, uh, you know, counseling from a humanistic uh, standpoint. So there are, there are, this is still relevant in some places, and uh, this is very, very good stuff if you're thinking of a clinical career. Okay. Session 14, another area, something I really like, uh, existential theories of personality, and um, I like existentialism quite a bit. Um, and you'll see these are also videos. I believe I did not do these videos. These, 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 so this is a nice short video, one of these animated things explaining existentialism. And so uh, I got a couple, again, not my videos, but also very good, um, easy to get. 
and also a video on Rollo May talking about existentialism, and then a video on death, anxiety, and terror management theory, which is really quite fascinating. And, and I can't remember if this is me or not. This is somebody else. This is no. So none of these are me. These are just other people who know what they're doing. And this is an interesting area: uh, terror management and death anxiety, because we have a professor uh, in in our department here, uh, Melissa Sankey, who is um, an expert in this area. Uh, um, and so if you're interested in this and you really like this existential stuff, you want to study it more experimentally, you can go study with Melissa and she has a research group and, um, and you can go study with her and get credit for studying with her and study some of these things. So um, I like existentialism. I've taught a class on existentialism in the psychology department before where we did a whole semester just on this stuff. And I would like to do that again sometime. If enough people are interested in it, come and talk to me and we could, we could talk about doing that. And you will read in this section, you will read uh, uh, some works by uh, Irving Yalom, who is the foremost existential, he's really not a psychologist, he's a psychiatrist, existential um, mental health practitioner still around. He's in his 90s now, um, I think in his 90s, he's very aged, but he's up at Stanford. Again, another Stanford guy, so we're only going give, to give you guys the best guys. And Yalom is the, the guy to go to for existential uh, personality theory and existential psychology applied clinically. Okay. Session 15, we're going to do personal, personal constructs. Uh, George Kelly, you know, short and sweet section here. Um, this is, uh, George Kelly is, again, this is to my mind very similar to existential psychology. So again, it gets its own thing here, but not as much on this. Um, session 16, you get cognitive behavioral theories. Again, another area that is very important clinically that most clinical programs will teach you cognitive behavioral uh, ther therapy. And this is sort of the predominant form of, of psychotherapy now. We can have a debate about whether that's a good thing or bad thing. But most programs, if you go into clinically, you're going to learn cognitive behavioral therapy. So you should know a little bit about the theory that underlies this. And so you'll learn a little bit uh, here. You'll hear a little bit about Aaron Beck. Uh, and you'll hear, you'll, you'll actually listen to Aaron Beck, and you'll hear about Albert Ellis, who um, came up with rational emotive therapy, which is really the precursor to cognitive behavioral therapy. It's very similar, and you'll read a little bit about them. So this is a very important area, especially if you're going to go on and... Um, and uh, do clinical psychology. You will probably get something on cognitive behavioral theory and probably also social learning theory in, um, in other classes that you take here. So, um, you know, this may not be the only places you get this stuff, but you got a section in the book here on this stuff, so important, okay? Session 17, um, you are going to learn a little bit about personality disorders. And again, what you, I've done here is to give you a lecture that I have in my other class, shameless plug for my Psych 473 Bizarre Behavior Culture Bound Syndromes class, which I'm trying to change the name of. So just look for Psych 473. I teach it in the spring. And this is all the weird stuff that falls between the cracks, all the weird advanced psychopathology and culture bound syndromes, really strange things. And uh, we start that class by going through personality disorders because personality disorders are often highly correlated with culture-bound syndromes. And so I have a video from that class, and so you'll watch me talk, give a lecture on that. And then um, uh, I have some lecture slides on that. These lecture slides, by the way, are in PDF form already. They're not in PowerPoint form because that's just the way I had them. And you can read here, um, you will read my paper that I published uh, a couple years ago, which is a review of the current state of knowledge of personality disorders. Okay, and so you'll re actually read something that I wrote, and you can take the dark triad test and find out if you're a narcissist or a, uh, a sociopath. And, um, you know, narcissism has been talked a lot about these days because certain uh, public figures are almost 100% likely to be narcissists and textbook perfect examples of narcissists. And so good to learn a little bit about narcissism. And this is an area I know a lot about. Um, again, this was uh, def my, part of my clinical practice and then also part of my uh, academic research uh, on personality disorders. So I know quite a bit about this. And so um, I think this is a pretty good lecture. Hopefully you guys will like it. Uh, all right. And um, the last section is Buddhist personality theory. What? Buddhist personality theory, what? Yeah, we're going to include a non-Western uh, form of psychology into this lecture, and it's one of the reasons, again, why I like the book, because the book has a wonderful chapter on Buddhist uh, personality theory, um, and so you can read that. Um, I have my own lecture on this, which is a little different than the book. 
I also teach a class, uh, Psych uh, 344, which is Psychology and Asian Thought, where I go over uh, Buddhist personality theory and uh, Buddhism in general in a lot of detail. And I believe these lecture videos are from that. And so you get a little bit of that class um, in there. And it's a little bit different than what's in the book. So um, don't worry about that. My lecture's a little different than the book. Uh, but the test questions will be from, from either thing. And there's a lot of overlap. The book chapter is, is, is really good. So I think um, you can read that and you'll learn a little bit about Buddhism and learn that Buddhism is essentially a, a system of psychology more than anything. More, really more than a religion, it's really a system of psychology. And I think that's really, really important. Um, Buddhist personality theory has also very strongly made its way into uh, the Western clinical practice of psychology. Uh, and many uh, types of therapists, including cognitive behavioral therapists, and even now some uh, psychoanalytically oriented therapists will have their patients, their clients go and practice mindfulness meditation as part of their therapy. And this mindfulness meditation comes from Buddhist personality theory. So again, there is, there is a relevance here. It's not just some weird esoteric thing that's off in the thing. But if you go to a cognitive behavioral therapist, it may be very well that they give you homework, which includes doing some, you know, Buddhist derived meditation. So I think this is important that you need to have some, um, some uh, exposure to this. And again, the book author also felt the same way, so she includes this in there, okay? And note, slides pertain to the book chapter, not the videos. So again, here, these, video, these slides will not go along with my video, okay? They go along with the book chapter, but not my video, okay? And you'll get to read my paper on uh, psychoanalytic view of the Buddhist Sangha, Buddhist uh, groups, and uh, talk about group functioning in Buddhism, and uh, hopefully you will enjoy that. Okay, so those are the modules. Those eight, those are the 18 you got to get through. Um, I have some review stuff here going on. There's a review video on trait theories. There's a view, review video on measuring personality. Again, these relate to modules 9 and 12, which in my experience tend for the students to be the drier modules. They tend to be a little more dry. And so you, get a little, you can get a little review of those things, right? Also in the bottom, I have, um, unlike any of my other classes, because this stuff can be technical and you're learning it very quickly, I have actually included study guides. And these are questions that will not be on the exams, but they're very similar to the exam questions. So if you go through these study guides, these should help you with the exam questions, even though they're not going to be the same. So these are, these are exam questions you can use to study. You study these things. These should theoretically help you with your tests. And there's quite a few of these questions you can go through. And also the study topics are on here. And they, it's done chapter by chapter. And again, this also comes from the book. So this, this, these, these fit very well with your book stuff, with what you're going to read in the book. Okay? And so there's one for the midterm and one for the uh, final. Okay, so you got a little study guide. Okay, all right. So those are the modules. Any questions about the modules here? You guys, okay? Makes sense with everything. All right, good. And now, um, um, I think we can just go through the course information here at the top, and then we'll go through the assignments and the quizzes and the grades. Okay. All right. So course information. The first one is the most important. Click on this. These are the dates of everything. The due dates, okay? So everybody, everybody should know these, okay? Course outline quiz. What is this? This just means you've gone through the course outline, the syllabus, and you read through the syllabus and you understand some of the basic things in the class, right? Like when are things due? What's due when? What do you have to cover? What do you not have to do? You know, what happens if you don't do write the paper for the class? Those kind of things, right? Very important. So it's a five-point quiz. Everybody should get five points on this, right? Open note, open book, right? So you can pull the syllabus up. It's just me to get to make sure everybody reads the syllabus because it's very important to read the syllabus. And that way you won't flood me with a bunch of questions that are on the syllabus. And if you write me stuff that's on the syllabus, I may give you back a very terse answer that says, it won't say RTFM. You guys know what that means, RTFM? Good. Don't worry about that. I won't say that because that's a little rude. I'll say, please refer to the syllabus for this. Okay, because otherwise, I'll be sitting in front of my computer 20 hours a day answering uh, questions that, that are already written down on the syllabus. Okay, because this isn't the only class I'm teaching. I'm teaching another class, too. Okay? So, syllabus important. Uh, here are the dates. Paper's prospectus, if you're doing the paper. Online midterm starts June 13th, ends the 17th. 
So you want to make I'm so I I'm, I got to correct myself. So you want to make sure that you do modules one through nine. You really want to be prepared by June thirteenth to do this. Not very much time, okay. And and you know, but you could sort of study that. You have a week or you have a couple of days to do it. So as long as you can get to the test and get it done by the seventeenth, you're good to go. And by twelve noon, please, if you can. And there's forty three points possible for the midterm test, okay. And the final uh, covers modules ten through eighteen. And you really you got to get that done by July second. So you got to get through all the stuff by July second. Hopefully, better by June twenty seventh. Forty two points possible. Okay. So, again, you know, a lot of work to do uh, in a short amount of time. And if you're turning your final paper in, also do July second at twelve noon. July second is the last day of the summer session. So I cannot. I have to get the grades in right after that, uh, very quickly. So I, I'm not going to give extensions out for people to do things. Um, you really need to get, get get things done by those dates. Okay, that's the drop dead date for at least the final and the paper and everything. Okay, uh, optional meeting dates. Here we are today on the second. Uh, we'll have another meeting on the 9th, 16th, and the 23rd, all on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. If you would like to meet with me individually, you have questions, uh, you want to meet by Zoom, or you know, you can always email me a question. I can, I'm happy to answer by email. But if you want to talk to me in person, just email me, and we'll set up a time we can we can Zoom together and, and talk one on one if, if that's more helpful. Okay. All right. So that's the deadlines and meeting dates. The syllabus is here, and this looks like it will come up, and you'll see all these famous people here. So, you know, bonus brownie points won't help you pass the class, but if you know who these people are, that's bonus brownie points. Um, you know, I, I will think, I won't, give, I won't necessarily give you a better grade, but I will think highly of you if you know who these people are. Okay? So here we are. Here's the website. Uh, I'm not going to be in my office, and I will not check this office phone number. I should have taken that out of there. You really need to um, email me. Uh, I haven't been in the office now for three months. So, um, and it's not likely I'm going back anytime soon. So, uh, email me, okay? Uh, online course uh, runs from May 30th to uh, July 2nd, 18 modules. Okay, you, it's up to you to, um, to, to uh, schedule how you're doing the material. And I really recommend you do it, uh, you know, a little bit at a time. Don't wait till the last minute and do it, okay? We have no required meetings. These meetings are all optional. Um, again, you can speak to me in person in Zoom. Send me an email. When you send me an email, let me know what class that you're in, because I am teaching other classes, and then I can get back to you more quickly. Okay? Or if you have other if you have questions that are general, bring them to the Zoom meetings, the optional meetings. We can talk about them there. Okay? Here are the meetings. Uh, I use the 15-minute rule for the meetings. If no one shows up in 15 minutes, I will stop the meeting and go off and do something else because I'm very busy, okay? Um, usually we'll go about an hour, um, depending on how many questions people have. We can go shorter, we can go longer, um, just depends, okay? Uh, we won't go longer than two hours because uh, that's, that's a long time, but uh, we can go as long. Generally, that should be enough time for anything anybody needs, okay? All right, uh, Canvas course layout, we went over that. Here are the exams, the three, the first one's a quiz. Again, this is about the syllabus, the syllabus quiz. Then you have the midterm and the final. Exams are all open note, open book, but they are timed. You have 75 minutes to complete the exam. That means if you have to look up everything in each exam, you will not have time to do them. But if you know some of the stuff, great. You can go through the exam, get the questions that you know, and then go back and look up the stuff that you don't know. That's fine. And so that's fine. I'm happy to have an open note, open book. The only thing I ask is that you don't work with other people, okay? Working with others will, can be considered cheating, and if you get caught for that, uh, the psychology department has a no tolerance, uh, zero tolerance policy for cheating. And even if I like you as a person tremendously a lot, I will still be required to report you to the dean of students. And if I don't do that, I will get in trouble with my boss, who next year will be Dr. Key Rose, who is a wonderfully nice person, but also is a stickler for the rules, and um, so I will have to report you. So don't do that, okay? That's not good, okay? Don't work on it on your own. Also, the other thing about working on your own, if you work with somebody else and you're relying on them for the answers, you know, their fallible memory, their fa fallible cognitive process may not really be up to snuff. 
And so you're really much better off looking up the answers on your own where you can trust yourself better than you can trust other people. So you're really much better off. Do it on your own, okay? Okay, um, and then you'll see the link in the modules, and there's also a link under the assignment in the quiz section here. So plenty of links to the exam, okay? Okay, course schedule again. Uh, uh, there's a course schedule. We'll get to that in a second. This is a suggested course schedule. You do not have to follow this. It's only a suggested schedule. But I found that people who follow it and break up the material and do it all along the way and don't cram at the last minute do better. I know I've said that now five times, but... There's a reason I'm saying it five times because people tend to want to cram and do everything at the last minute and then they inevitably don't do so well and they come to me and they say, oh, is there anything I can do to up my grade? No, it's a little too late now. Okay, you should have done all the stuff uh, along the way and that would have been better. Okay? All right. Uh, videos, we've already went over the videos. Um, I recommend highly that you take notes on the videos. What I, I, I would do if I were doing the class and what other people who have been successful at the class have done is to print out the notes and have the, the, the lecture slides, or not the notes, print out the lecture slides, have them right there, take notes on the lecture slides with a pencil or a pen while they're watching the videos. And there's some research that says that, that says taking notes by hand with a pen or a pencil actually helps you incorporate the, the, the material better into your memory. So um, I recommend take notes by hand, have them printed out, take them by hand while you're watching the videos. I think that's the best way to do it. Okay? Paper. So I'll go to the paper guideline. In a minute, there's a, a quote, required paper. It's kind of required. It's really, the paper is really required if you want to get an A. Okay? If you are satisfied with getting a P, B plus in the class, which is actually a perfectly good grade, uh, you do not have to do the paper. Okay? So the paper is, it is technically required, but if you don't do it, uh, the only thing that will happen is that you won't get an A. Okay? You want A minus or an A. Okay? So again, you may choose not to do the paper. Okay? And be aware that I will not, but be aware that you can only get a B plus, as high as a B plus if you don't do the paper. Okay? It's regardless of whatever scores you get on the exam. Okay? Um, the papers are all due on July 2nd, and they must be uploaded by noon. Okay? And I can't take late papers again because i got to get the grades in right away. Okay? Student outcomes, these are the things that, you know, that make the accreditation people happy. Uh, these are some of the things that you will get from the class. Obviously, you're going to learn a lot more than just these things. Here's the text, Engler's uh, 2013 text on personality theories. And again, um, you know, you're welcome to use an older, and when the newer edition comes out, use a newer edition. But just re realize the material may be a little different in a different order. And so that's on you if you use a different book. Supplemental readings, I provided all those. Here's a list of them all. And again, the ones with the asterisks are the ones that you are required to do. So here you go. So I've just, I've just gone through here. Here's all the ones with an asterisk. Um, all right, you can just read through these. So if you want to do the readings in advance to start doing the readings, you can just start going through these. And what I've done here is I've really tried to keep the readings to a minimum so that you're not overwhelmed in this short amount of time in the summer session. Okay, and this is a good chunk of reading, so you really want to get on this stuff soon. Okay, all right. And again, there's a list of all of them there. Uh, again, you're going to be evaluated on the exams are, as the main thing you're going to get your grade on, and then also the paper if you want to get an A. Okay, so those are the only things. And then the short quiz, which is just going to be on the, on the syllabus, and, and then the, the midterm and the final. Those are the exams. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, again, here you go. 100 points. Your grade will be out of 100 points, regardless of what Canvas says. Okay? Canvas says all these weird columns and everything. I can't get them turned off. I would love to turn them off because I make errors in grading because I'm looking at the wrong column. It really annoys me. But I can't turn them off for some reason. It's just the way Canvas is. It may say 100 and what points, whatever. Just, it's out of 100 points, okay? Your grade will be calculated out of 100 points, okay? There is no extra credit available for this course. Um, we'll see if, if there's psych experiments going on. Sometimes I will relent and add some extra credit, uh, but I don't know of any that are going on right now. You know, for, for 301, if there are people doing 301 classes, I don't know if there are 301 classes going on. Um, this session, so I think there will not be any extra credit for this course, okay? So sorry about that. Um, here's your grading rubric. This is pretty, pretty um, uh, standard. 
again, here are the deadlines again. So you know, you'll notice there's a lot of um, a lot of repeat repetition here, because again, maybe students see it at one place and they don't see it in another place. I just want to make sure you see this because again, these are hard deadlines. Okay. Uh, you may find errors in things here. Uh, doing these online courses, there's a lot of moving parts that have to go together, and this is a constantly a work in progress. If you notice an error in something, something doesn't show up on the video, there's something wrong, uh, there's typos, there's something going on, dates wrong somewhere, let me know right away and I will do my best to correct it, um, you know, ASAP, okay? Um, and you may know that I'm constantly reworking things, so you may notice some stuff. Hopefully, I'm, eventually I will get most of that stuff ironed out, but um, uh, you know, as I'm reworking and doing things, there may be errors. I actually very much appreciate you guys letting me know if you find something that doesn't work. Now, I should mention here, if the videos don't work for some reason, or stuff isn't showing up on your screen, and you email me, and I go up, and I look at stuff, and it comes up fine for me, what I'm going to assume is that there's probably something going on with your browser, or your computer. And I've already had somebody in this class email me with this kind of an error. And what is probably going on is there's a browser issue or a computer issue. And what you need to do is you need to shut your browser. First go to your browser, go to uh, the preferences or the settings and, and clear your browser. You guys hopefully know how to do that. Clear your browser, uh, even turn off your browser, even turn off your computer, restart it again, and then go to the, go to the um, go to the, uh, the Canvas page and see if things show up. That happens a number of times. The other thing is that the IT people highly recommend you use the Chrome browser. That one seems to be the optimal browser for, for uh, our Canvas installation at CSUCI. So Chrome browser, make sure your, 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 your browser is, 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 is clear, clear your browser settings, um, restart your computer. If that doesn't work, let me know. And if it's still things are working on my end, at that point, I might have to send you the IT people to, to, to figure out what's going on. Uh, we have very good IP people. They're, they're awesome, uh, both uh, the learning people who run, who run Canvas and also the extended university, which the summer courses are run through, has a very good IT person. So, um, you know, again, if, if I can't figure it out, I will send you to the IT people. But, but usually those things will, um, will, will, will fix most of the problems. Okay? All right, disability services. If you need extra time or whatever in the exam, go through disability accommodation services, and they will help you out. They will send me something, and then I will... Um, uh, add extra exam time or whatever you need uh, that, I, that I can accommodate, I will do that. Usually it's extra exam time, okay? Uh, academic dishonesty, don't plagiarize things. Your papers will uh, go through, turn it in. They will be thoroughly checked for plagiarism. Um, again, we have a zero tolerance policy for cheating. Uh, the main thing about plagiarizing is that you need to be aware of this sort of uh, uh, what I call cut and paste plagiarism, where you're taking part of one sentence and part of another sentence and putting them together. And then when I look at the turn it in report, your report looks like a note from a serial killer. So, you know, different colors and everything. So uh, one thing is you can do is you can turn your paper in early and you can look at the turn it in report yourself. You can do that as many times as you want up until the due date. Um, I think after a certain amount of time, it might wake you, make, make you wait 24 hours before you turn it in again. So, so use that. Use turn it in to do that, and you can see if you've got that cut and paste plagiarism. That tends to be the worst thing, and you will, you will flunk your paper, and if there's enough cut and plagiarism, not enough cut and paste plagiarism, you, you will flunk the class. And again, I, you know, it's must, as nice as I want to be, um, you know, we have this policy in the psychology department that I am really required to to turn you into the dean and, and, and report you for plagiarism. So don't do that, especially the cut and paste plagiarism. Okay? And don't just plagiarize a, a whole paper. That's just ridiculous. Um, you know, you're better off just not doing the paper and getting a B plus. You know, don't worry about it. Okay? So um, don't cheat. It, it's bad. Um, it's not going to help you out. Uh, so yeah, so don't do that. Okay? All right. So that's that. Um, Here's the suggested course schedule, and again, this is suggested, suggested. You don't have to follow this, but all the highlighted material is required. And again, you can see here, um, you know, textbook chapters are here, uh, supplemental reading are here, so everything that's required is here, okay? And again, these are the textbook chapters and the lecture slides are required, okay, for each, each, each chapter in the book, okay? And you go through here, and this again, all up to you when you're going to do this stuff. Okay? 
when you're going to do this stuff, okay? And then again, it shows you the midterm thing here after, after the not after uh, uh, session nine, module nine, on and on and on. So you guys, we went through all this stuff. This is basically the same as what's in the modules with everything highlighted that you need to do, okay? Again, suggested time period. These time periods here are suggestions, okay? Paper guidelines. This is a biography paper. So if you do this, this is what I'm going to ask you to do, is to write a biography of a person who played some role in developing some sort of theory related to personality psychology, okay? Again, you can choose not to do the paper, but you can't get a grade higher than a B plus, okay? And it's due on uh, the paper prospectus. I'm requiring you to do a paper prospectus, and this is basically to tell me that you've done the library research before you start writing the paper. Otherwise, what will happen is everybody will do the library research and write the paper at the last minute. And I'll have a bunch of crappy papers. Half of them will be plagiarized, cut, have cut and paste plagiarism, and then I'll be flunking people all day long. And I don't like to do that. I don't like to flunk people. I want everybody to get a good grade. Okay? I want everybody to get through. So you got to do a paper perspective. If you want to do the paper by June 17th, you have to have these things written and submitted. Title of the paper, including the person you're writing about. Okay, if you're unsure about the person you're writing about, whether they will count or not, you can email me and I will let you know. Most people are going to be okay, unless it's somebody that I've really covered in depth in class, like Freud and Jung. Don't do Freud and Jung, you know, that's okay. Somebody wanted to do Karen Horney, that's okay. You can do Karen Horney. Just realize if you do do somebody who is somebody you're going to cover in the class, I'm going to, be, I'm going to scrutinize your paper a little more. I'm going to expect that there's more in your paper than just what we covered in class. Okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to look for a little more depth in those papers. So, and again, this is personality theory. There's a million people you could use to write about. All you got to do is go to Google and Google personality theory person, and you'll get a whole list of people will come up. Okay, you have to make sure the person that you pick will have enough information, either that they have written, like stuff they have written, or stuff written about them before you can, you know, you know, to do the paper. Because you have to have these annotated bibliographies. You've got to have some information that they've written or stuff that's written about them to do the paper. So that's the thing you have to loop, do. You can use the library. The library is helpful even though they're online. You can go to a librarian and get some help. Um, but you need to pick a person, okay? Uh, then you have to do four annotated bibliographies. These are short summaries of of, of papers or books or things either the person has written or things written about the person. Okay, so you've got to do those. So you've got to include them. This is your library research work, okay? So you've got to have four of those, okay? And then you have to have a reference list for all the reference works you're going to use in your paper. And you need to have what's going to require you. I'm requiring you to have, what am I requiring you to have? Ten? I think you have to have seven. Uh, you are required to have... Uh, 10 references, 10 references, books and journal articles, not web pages, okay? It could be a journal that's published on the web or a journal that you access through the web, which we all do now, but they cannot be web pages or encyclopedias or, you know, entries or things like that. They have to be actually legitimate articles that you've got to go and go and do a little library research. This is the whole point of the paper is to get you to, get the, you know, to use the library and do research, okay? So I'm very clear about that, okay? So the reference section should have that in your prospectus. So again, by the prospectus time, halfway through the course, you should have done your, you know, gun, done your library research, and then you have the second half of the course to write the paper. Okay. Now, uh, you must turn in the paper prospectus in order to be able to do the paper. Okay. If you just turn in the paper at the end and you don't do the prospectus, I will not give you any points for the paper. Okay? You got to do both. I don't want papers that are that are written at the last minute. And this is why I'm doing this. Okay. So, paper itself, the subject should be a lesser known, or well or lesser known person, but not a major person in the class. Don't choose Freud, Jung, Skinner, you know, somebody who's just the main topic of one of those things. If, if, if you do, if there's somebody in there, again, like Karen Horn and I or somebody you really want to do, email me. I'll probably let you do it, but just realize that there's going to be more scrutiny. Okay. Um, your paper is going to be structured. It's going to have these sections, and I would like you to have these titles and these sections in your paper. Okay, early life and education describe the individual's childhood, where they grow up, any influences, you know, in their early life, etc., etc., etc. Okay, 
Second is Zeitgeist, which is a German word that means spirit of the times. Describe the historical zeitgeist of the place and time in the individual's life, what influenced them in their own countries, what influences came from outside, whether economic, racial, nationalistic, border issues, etc. Describe the effects, if any, of gender, race, culture, or class on the individual's career and outlook. Discipline. What discipline of area or area of psychology the person manifests their expertise? Clinical, social, even something outside of psychology, right? Um, how do the individual's discipline or profession affect their later actions or beliefs? Were they good at what they did? Were they bad? How do other profession, people in the profession view them? These kind of things to include in this section. The fourth one, uh, ideas, theories, schools of thought, was the individual associated with a particular school of thought, religious, philosophical, evolutionary biology, political, racial, you know, what was the school of thought? Were they behaviors? Were they psychoanalytic? You know, these kind of things, right? There's something more specific about the area of psychology. Again, look beyond the obvious here, okay? You know, the person maybe was, you know, maybe the person trained with Freud, but then later on, you know, wrote something, you know, like, really like Karen Horney and followed her stuff more specifically. So you can get into the specifics here, okay? What are the major ideas or ideologies in the school of thought? How does the individual's work relate to the mainstream of general ideas at the time? How does it relate to stuff going on now, okay? And then five, the published works. The individual, the first part, A, did the individual do any research or publish anything? If so, describe overall what their contribution is. Well, Freud, you know, published an entire, you know, 23-volume set of works. You know, he published, you know, hundreds of papers. You know, he's hugely influential in, you know, in psychology, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Or, you know, Alfred Adler really only, he only published a couple books, but he's, you know, this had this influence of, you know, later, you know, forms of psychotherapy. So, again, talk a little bit about overall their contribution. B, here you go, you get to do your annotated bibliographies, and again, you can pull this from what you've already done in the prospectus, you're going to plop it in here, except you're going to have three selected, uh, three longer, or three um, shorter annotated bibliographies, okay, okay, three shorter ones, which means basically a paragraph or two, and then one longer one, which is, you know, again, maybe four to six paragraphs, okay, so again, you're going to have a total of four three short and one long of the annotated bibliographies. The person doesn't have any work written about them, you may substitute, if the person doesn't have any written work themselves, you may substitute work pieces written about them, okay? These annotated bibliographies should include the reference that you're going to have also in your reference, your reference uh, list at the bottom, you're also going to have that reference in the annotated, before the annotated bibliographies for each of them, okay? And again, these annotated bibliography references count towards your total 10. So you need 10 altogether. Four come from the annotated bibliographies and six come from other sources, right? But in your reference list, you're going to have all 10. Does that make sense? If I look at your reference list and I only see six, but the other four are in your annotated bibliographies, but you didn't also include those in the reference list, I only think you did six and I'll ding your paper. Okay, so make sure all 10 are in the reference list. Okay. So that's, that's the published works. Six is the, your conclusion and personal thoughts. This is your own personal feelings about the person, their contribution to personality theory. Good, bad, whatever. This is where you get to tell me what you think about this person. Okay? And seven is the references. Again, it should be all sources included. Uh, but don't use encyclopedias, dictionaries, biographies, autobiographies. I need to take that out of there. Um, don't use those. Just use uh, academic journals, periodicals, and books. Okay? If you have somebody who's really historical and you want to, you know, throw in some sort of newspaper or magazine article about them, you know, one, one, one or two of those is okay, okay? If you have somebody who has created a film or a video uh, based on their works, you know, one or two of those is okay. I'll allow one or two, okay? But for the most part, I want journal, journals, periodicals, and books, okay? If you don't have your reference right, I will deduct points from your paper. Paper length and composition. The paper should be a minimum of seven pages, okay? But seven pages includes the title page and the reference page. So what this means is I really want a five-page paper. So this is not a huge paper, okay? Not a huge paper, okay? Five-page paper, written pages, okay? 1.5 space, 12-point times New Roman font with one-inch margins all around. You guys all should know how to do that. If you don't, then I will send you over to the writing center or someplace else, okay? And they can show you how to do that. Page count, um, as I mentioned, includes the title page and the references. So, again, 
you know, the, the, the first page and the last page are kind of givens, and you really just need to write five pages. You don't need to do an abstract for the paper. Headings are required for each of these sections above should be a heading in your paper. Okay. Points will be deducted for poor writing. Uh, I need to say this, grammatical, spelling, structural errors, etc. Upper division course, I expect you know how to write. Um, and even professional writers get uh, editing help. Okay. I'm writing a paper right now. My wife is editing it, and it's bleeding red. You know, and I'm a good writer. I've been writing a long time, but you, know, you get editing. That's how professional writers do it. Okay? So it's a good chance for you to get to learn to do this. The good news is the summer is the writing center is open. I don't know if how they're doing it, if they're doing it online, but they are open, and I will post uh, their information up in one of the announcements. I'll make an announcement and post their information pretty soon, but they are open, and so you can get help with your paper. I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend uh, using the writing center. Okay? All papers will be turned in using Blackboard and, the, uh, or not Blackboard, sorry, there's a typo, using Canvas. Uh, and the turn it in system. I will change that. It should be Canvas right there. Okay. Uh, pa papers will be thoroughly checked for plagiarism. Okay. And I already talked to you about the results of cheating. Don't do that. Um, papers worth 10 points out of 100 toward your grade, uh, and it's due on the last day. Okay. So that's the paper stuff. All right. And because People go, what's this paper supposed to look like? Uh, I have a student who has given me permission to post their very excellent paper up here. So you have a sample of a very good paper. And here it is. And you can see this here. I blocked out uh, her name. But this is a paper on B.F. Skinner. Again, if you turn in a paper and you plagiarize from this paper, you'll flunk the class, right? But she did B.F. Skinner. I let her do B.F. Skinner. If somebody really wanted to do B.F. Skinner, I would let them do B.F. Skinner. But again, probably maybe not because you already have this paper to use. So maybe he's not a good person. Uh, but you can look at this paper. You can see what the annotated bibliographies look like. She did an excellent job on this paper. And um, so this is, this is your role model. This is what your paper is going to look like this. Okay? So use this as your role model for the paper. Okay? And again, I have the midterms, uh, also something how to write an annotated bibliography. Again, you got to click this link here. And you can go to the University of Maryland Global Campus, and they'll tell you how to write an annotated bibliography if you have some trouble with this. Okay? It's a little extra thing there. But you, you can also just look at the sample paper and get a sense of what I wrote in the sample paper, what the, how to do it from the sample paper. Okay? All right, and then you got your midterm study guide, your final exam study guide also up here, also at the bottom, but you also have a link here, okay? And I think that is it for the module sections. And now we can look at the assignments. Very simple here. There's your course biography. There's your paper prospectus link to turn in your paper prospectus. There's the midterm, there's the final, and there's the final paper uh, to turn in your final paper. So again, very simple stuff here. These are your assignments. Quizzes, it's just going to be uh, these the three quizzes. And your grades will show up here, and this will show you, at, at, you know, what you got out of everything, okay? So it should be basic, uh, basically this, okay? This is your number, total number of points is 100, right? I think I got that right. So we got 43, 42, 5, that's 90, 10, it's 100, okay? So everything is going to be out of 100. All right, and then I think that's it. That's it for the course, uh, going through the course. Any questions on any of this stuff going through the course material? Does that make sense? I have sense a question. The yes, annotated please. bibliography, yes. your link says there's two types. Is there like the analytical or critical or something like that? Is there Say that again. Say that again. That there's two types of annotated bibliographies. Yeah. Analytical or critical, I think. Yeah. I don't care which one you do. It doesn't matter to me. Um, a lot of people combine them, kind of combine them too. Actually, most people don't do, don't do the critical ones. They just do sort of a more descriptive one. But you can do either one. It's fine. You know, if you want to be critical of the work, that's, that's great. You know, either, either way is fine. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Right, good question. Uh, any other questions on, on this stuff?